Sports Summer Sausage, your only source for useless news and information. So sit down, shut up, and tell your roommate to stop eating your toothpaste. I'm your host, Ryan Faulkner. Well, I'm the other host, Johnny Gibson. Uh, you're not the host, you're a host. I'm a host, Ryan. That sounds better. Oh, yeah. I like that. Sorry. Well, I come first, right? Ugh. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you went there, not me. <laughs> Why are you turning red, man? I'm not. I don't understand. It's the lighting. It's weird. I got a red shirt on. Are you so, Irish? Yeah. You're Irish. I don't know if you caught this, but this this is the Half Fast Sportscast, and we are live right now from an undisclosed location in Fort Worth, Texas. We are so live. And producing the show tonight, we have Rich on the boards. Red. Uh, uh, yeah, sorry, Rich. Guys. Oh, what's up, dude? How you doing? I haven't Not seen you. Soon. Hey, you guys. I didn't know you were going to be here tonight. Awesome. Sweet. We just have to be podcasting on his network while he's sitting there watching his broadcast what on are his the network. Odds? We pretty it's much nuts. know that. Guy. I don't know if you guys know that, but we know him. Yeah. Well, I do very well, actually. Listen. What? We have a huge show tonight. I don't know if you guys heard about this, but Carmelo Anthony on the show tonight to talk about the trade. Carmelo, he's going to be calling in. Let's get him in here. Oh, wait. Oh, he's not. Oh. Oh. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. He, he couldn't make it because he's playing basketball right now, I think. Oh. Yeah. We're blaming that one on Rich because he's supposed to line yeah, this I up. Yeah, I thought you had that lined up. but Yeah, I uh, hadn't heard back from their guy, so I thought it was all set. Yeah, but... that happens to us sometimes. You know what happens when you assume <laughs> things. Yeah, the mascot for Mellow Yellow would come in, but we just waved him off. We waved him off. I don't know who that is. Dude, the, the soft drink? Yeah, I know. Okay. I, I know. What is the mascot for Mellow Yellow? Yeah. Is it a chicken? Yes. Remember, that's what they were calling him after that fight? Remember when he got in that fight, he punched that guy and ran to the other side of the court like a girl? No. He, like, threw a punch, he's like, and he just ducks and runs to the other side of the court, so that's what they are calling him Mellow Yellow. Nice. Yeah. It's a good story. That's the end of it, actually. Okay. Uh, so... While we're on the subject, let's uh, let's get into the NBA. And uh, there's been a lot of trade activity going on the last day and week. Now, when you say NBA, what do you mean? What is the NBA? That is actually the National Basketball Association. Oh, I did not know that. Is that right? That's probably right. We know things like that. <clears throat> so, you want to get into that? Go ahead. No, <laughs> I thought you were. I thought you were. I thought you had the ball, man. You're, you're the host. Oh, I am the host. Go ahead. So, I guess, what was it? Let's talk about Carmelo. Two days ago, uh, the Carmelo Anthony trade went down, finally. I'm sick of hearing of it. I don't know <laughs> yeah. about you. For those of you who don't know, he went to the Knicks. The Knicks, the, sh- the team you don't want to shave with, the Knicks. The team we all knew he was going to. Well, this is a weird thing because the players... With, with what happened this summer with LeBron and everything, like them dictating where they want to go, it's like the, it takes the teams out of the, the equation. Like, right. And the NBA is probably the one sport that has the least amount of control over that, the least amount of loyalty. As soon as they sign, once they get into the league, they're signing there. Like, if you think Blake Griffin is going to stay with the Clippers, you're absolutely crazy. He's going somewhere else, to the Lakers. Play the win. He's going to go somewhere where it's fashionably cool to play. Probably a top five market. Yeah, this that's where it's, bad about that. Okay. Yeah. It's, it's such a flashy league. Players want to be where they're going to be seen most. Yep. So, in this case, Carmelo wanted to go to New York. He wants to be the king. The he, king of New York. It's just the vibe. It's just the mentality, you know, of uh, the NBA player. Flashy. You want to be seen. Well, not only that, but uh, Amari Stoudemire is his good buddy. Really good buddy. He was at his wedding, by the way. Yeah? How'd that go? Actually, Did he give a Frank Tank speech? No. But from what I understand, uh, Chris Paul was also there, also his very good friend, and they did do a toast where they talked about how uh, in a few years how they'll all be together in New York, and it looks like... Oh, that's a, funny, that's a funny story. Wouldn't that be crazy if it was something? And then now it's and, only one player away from yeah. happening. And... Uh, and... Chris Paul moving is coming up in a year or two, so it's pretty much going down. He's, I, he's going to New York. They're going to be there. They're going to be the new Heat. 
I that's a pre- that's a dude. I think that's a more deadly matchup. Carmelo, Amari Stoudemire, and Chris Paul. That's a tough. That's a tough threesome. Threesome. Yeah, because Chris Paul likes that that small ball type of offense. And of course, Amari loves it. He, I mean, Amari doesn't play any. Dude, Amari almost turned that team around just with him there. So now when you throw I mean, in well, Carmelo and let's not forget Chauncey Billups was in the trade too. He's going. Yeah, I mean, this almost. It's going to be a great team. This Nick trade almost s- smells of uh, the Paul Gasol trade. Like if you're getting Billups, Billups still got a, a good two, maybe three years left in him. Going to a. a, a an overall young team in the Knicks that can't only help. In return, you know Denver's going to get in a couple of a couple of guys. They got some good guys. The Neo Bellinari is a great player, but is he a, is he a mellow no. or a Billups combined? No, definitely not. I think they think the uh, Nuggets are getting hosed. I think this is what the league wants, and I do think, in my own personal well, the opinion, players want, which is all that matters apparently. We'll get into this later, but it's what I want. Uh, it's what I think the league wants, and that's <laughs> what. They're gonna get. Yep. But that's for another job. I'll buy that. Um, no, but it's also interesting because today there was another trade. But now that no, first let's say the trade deadline this? is tomorrow at two o'clock uh, Texas time. Yeah. Uh, Central. So um, the rumor was today that the Mavs were gonna trade cor- the expiring contract of Karan Butler. And something else. Well, here's what to happened. To get Devin Harris. They, they had a trade. That was the offer. Is we'll give you Devin Harris for Karan Butler's expiring contract. Um, who's the... Uh, Dominique Jones. Oh, and, yeah. The injured and, dojo. And our first round draft pick. And the Mavs said, no. You can have Karan Butler's expiring contract. That's all we're willing to give up for Devin Harris. Which is, which is right. I mean, Devin Harris is... He's not. He's above average, but he's not worth two, you know, a future great player versus and Cron Butler, who's a current great player and a first round draft pick. It's just it's not worth it. They were right, so that much actually was on the table, and the Mavs turned it down. Yeah, they weren't getting enough back in return. Um, but what they were probably going to do was turn right around and trade Devin Harris to. Um, Oh my gosh! To Utah for Darren Williams, which would have been great. Which would have been that would have been ideal. That would have been great because then that guy's got a good eight years left yeah. on him. We got a good young point guard to come in and, and take the pressure off Jason Kidd, let him kind of ease out and slow down on the minutes. And not to mention Darren Williams would be a great fit here just because he's a local guy. He's from the colony, so it'd be cool for him to come back to you know where he he grew up playing. I'm sure he. Yeah, I I'm think sure they're great fit. I'm disappointed that that's not going to work out. I'm sure playing for the Mavericks holds some intrigue for him, but nevertheless, he has gone to the New Jersey Nets for Devin Harris and uh, a couple other guys. Maybe those are the bit players in the trade. Devin Harris and uh, Derek this, Favors. Derek Favors, the number well, number three overall draft pick. Is that right? Yeah, I don't know, man. I mean, that's uh, they gave up. They gave up three players and three million dollars and two first round draft picks. Just for Darren Williams. That's a lot. And Darren Williams is a good player. He yeah. is a good player. He's great, yeah. How better, about, better than Devin Harris, but I don't know. How about, I, I just think that's weird on the Jazz's part because, man, they got uh, – they're definitely going to be doing some rebuilding. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I mean, I, what else are you saying? For, they let Boozer go in the offseason. They let their coach then, go. Yeah, their coach got – their coach quit because evidently Darren because Williams, Darren Williams, Williams. Little, little shit. Yeah, and then Darren Williams is gone. So their fans – I would hate to be a Jazz fan right now because it's just everything that team stood for is gone now. And so they're some, basically starting from scratch. Some pissed off Mormons. <laughs> oh, that's true, probably. With their magic underwear. They like basketball. Let's not get into it. Um, but another thing I want to point out, though, is something I'm, I... is an opinion I held, especially this off season, is that the reason why... I mean, it was a, it was a pipe dream. There's no way that LeBron was coming to Dallas, no. for the obvious reasons. Right. But also, I think for an underlying reason, and I think it's another reason why all these trades are happening to one conference, to the East. Yeah. Because the East blows, and it's these guys where they want to play with their buddies, where they yeah. be the 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 schoolyard bullies, 
and bully around all these shitty teams and make themselves look better. Yeah. I can see that. I mean, look. Bosch went from Toronto, which is still in the East, but he went to uh, Miami. They could all could have gone to better teams. They all could have gone to better teams, but they didn't. They chose to stay in the East to pick on the little kids. Well, last year, I mean, the East has changed just this year alone. I mean, now you look at the, not so much as the East is better, but the West is weaker. All these players are leaving the West, like Darren Williams, yeah. Boozer. Like, the West is becoming... I mean, Mario, Mario went to the Knicks. He left the West. So all these players are going to the West, and now that it's going to be more competitive, and it'll be interesting to see how that works out. But that's great for the Mavericks because then that makes it a little bit easier. Yep. I mean, I which the is... The Mavericks are in good shape right now. The uh, Mavericks... Okay, so... And, and now Denver's pretty much out of the picture competitively. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Denver's not as competitive as it is. Utah's not as competitive. And those, de- those guys are definitely... Uh, contenders. Uh, they're contenders for the playoff scene yeah. in the West. Now, what do you think about... Okay, so the trade deadline's tomorrow in the two. You want Karan Butler to go or not? Um, I'd be willing to give him up if we're getting quality in return, but honestly, I think the Mavs are great where they're at right now. You know? You're right. I, I, I definitely don't think they need to make a trade, but I would be open to one if it was for a decent player. I just don't know who, they, who they'd be able to trade for. I don't... Uh... I don't know. Whenever Karan went out, I thought this season was was pretty much just doomed. But he's not that good. No, nah, dude, he was he was he was averaging twenty points a game. I think twenty one. Yeah. He, he he just fell right into position where he needed to be. And with all that he says, he's been saying, you know, I'll be back in the playoffs. I'll be back in the playoffs, right? But I think now that there's been some stories written in the papers about him actually probably being able to be back for a playoff run. Yeah, His miraculous maybe, recovery. Maybe. I mean, it's nothing short of what they say is, is pretty incredible, his, his progress he's made with this injury. Mm-hmm. So, But even if he does come back, how good is he going to be coming off an he injury will be going straight to the playoffs? But, I mean, but look at this. He's, still, he's, he's relatively still young. He's still having for next year. Although he is in a contract year, this injury only helps your, negoti- your, your leverage to signing him for a lower amount of money. Right. So, but you, would you would you not want Quran next back next year? No, I think it'd be if great. He's healthy, I would like him back. back. Yeah, I want a healthy Quran. So why in the, why would you trade him? I don't think they are. I don't think they are either. No, I would. I don't think the Mavs. I don't think. I don't think it'd be. Smart I think if they were going to make a move, it was going to be for a point guard like Devin Harris or Darren Williams, and they're both off the table now. So I think I don't. I don't think they're making any moves. Yeah. But man, crazier things have happened. I mean, I I won't necessarily be surprised if. If something crazy goes down tomorrow at the last minute, but I'm not expecting anything. I think not at this point. I think the reinforcement. So unabashed Lakers fan uh, Bartonimus is ragging on Karan in the chat room. Brian, do you have your chat window up there? No. Should I? Yeah, don't look at me. Look at your chat room. Like an employee. You told us not to because of bandwidth issues. Oh yeah, dude. Uh, Don't worry about it. Why don't you be a producer and tell me what he says? Well, he was. (laughs) He's debating that you could get it. That anybody would want to trade for Crumb. Well, yeah. I mean, his skill set is is debatable, but what's what's attractive about would... him is his ten million dollar expiring contract. Teams want that want to get under that uh, that salary cap, especially with the new CBA coming, which is going to penalize teams even more for being over. So that is very attractive, and people would want a salary dump. Yeah, but as far as Player wise, as far as skill set, he's a good Batman to a uh, Robin to a Batman, and which is but everyone already here. has at least he's a good fat man good to a Robin. Man, you know, nobody's everyone already has someone like him, if not somebody better than him. You know, I don't know. I, I don't see anybody. There are other guys like him, he, but I don't think he's just a guy. I, I think, think I think other guys like him to go to the, the Nets, and that's gone. So uh, yeah. I think you're better off staying here with Roddy, with what Roddy B has to bring. I think Roddy B is going to bring it. And it's it's almost like a, you know he's going to start. What I always say about the Spurs is that the what makes the Spurs so good, or what made them in the past, is they knew when to the, when to hit the gas. And it's after the All Star break, they'll they spare will, you man. to death. Now this year they're they're just they're just going they're off. tearing they're tearing everything apart. But yeah. normally what they do is they'll spare you to death with their very boring winning but boring type of basketball. 
and then they'll really ramp it up going into the playoffs. They're still, they're still not they're ramped trying. up. They have a record like that. They're still not ramped up. I mean, Tim Duncan, he's he's not playing full out yet. They're 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 no, they're they're, the no, they're resting him. They're playing a lot of George but Hill. They're getting the a lot of come around, we're gonna see a lot of Tim Duncan. He's going to be full forward. Well, he's. He is uh, he's a centerpiece of that of that, of that offense yep. uh, and that defense. But anyway, yeah, uh, I think Karan's useful. I think he's a good uh, Robin, which is what he's fit in here. And uh, but as far as as far as the rest of the season, if he comes back for the playoffs, I don't think he's going to be. He could. A force. He could. I don't know. We'll see. It'd be nice to have him just for a little more depth, but. Eh. Yeah, I think it'd be kind of giving your hopes up, to hoping that the. Uh, he is going to pour in 20 a game, which is not going to happen. But if anything, him for next year, and you can buy, probably buy him for the cheap because of his injury problem. So, yep. the end. Do we... Uh, no. I, I want to talk about the Stars and Goligowski, but do, do, should I do this fighting segment first? Fighting? You do whatever you want to, dude. This is your show. All right. Now, I'm sure a lot of you out there, especially if you watch baseball, that's where it kind of started. These Fighting necklaces. No, is it fighting or fighting? Fight ten. P H I T E N. It's so it's, seriously, it's spelled with a P. Yeah, they're yeah. like a Japanese company or some crap. These guys, okay. Well, one of their big uh, pushers oh. is uh, C J Wilson. If you're a Rangers fan, you've probably seen him wearing those necklaces that are all woven together. You know, they're, they're really big in baseball, and now they're kind of getting into the NBA, and they're working their way around, and, and now all the kids are buying them because. Where's them in the NBA? Uh, in the All Star Game, uh, Carmelo Anthony was wearing one. Um, consider the source. Yeah. So, but, but they're working their way into NBA now. Now they're supposed to. What everyone's claiming is they give you. They they balance your body more and make you. I guess you have better endurance. I don't know. It it, it all sounds stupid. Uh, so I did a little research. I wanted to see what Fighton had to say. Um, what they're actually claiming that that their necklaces have to offer, and I found it's on when I'm staying up. It's on when I'm standing up. Don't do that. Don't do this. What is that noise, Rich? Okay, forget it. Okay, listen. I was checking out their website. Oh, you're watching B? Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, so I was on Fighting's website, and I went to their About Us page, and something that I that I noticed right off the bat was their uh, their philosophy. Now this is a philosophy, they go above and beyond what anybody else's philosophy is. I mean this is something that nobody else is offering. We will never offer an item that might have an ill effect on your health, no matter how convenient and useful it may be. So you're telling me... They're the only ones out there offering that. I think everybody else wants to give you something that will hurt your health out of convenience. Uh, what? What kind of philosophy is that? As if there are other isn't that necklaces. Isn't that implied by everybody? That, that we're not going to hurt you with our product, right? Not Monsanto. Okay. Well, hold on. It's, it's as, if, as if there are other necklaces out there that will hurt you. We'll never offer an item that might have an ill effect on your health, no matter how convenient and useful it may be. Are they comparing it to steroids? I guess steroids is the only other thing. What, I mean, what's going to hurt? Okay, I thought that was stupid. Maybe that is tangible. All right, here's what they claim it does, though. Okay, after examining the meaning of health in, in this day and age, we directed our attention to the body's natural healing power. Part of the body's natural response is it is often weakened by the fatigue and stress accumulated with the hectic pace of modern life. Your body's energy system influences all of your body's responses. Fight and products regulate and balance that flow of energy throughout your body. Wow. And you know how they do that? They put titanium in the necklace and apparently that gives you all these magical powers. Now you might be asking yourself, why would you wear, how would you get a piece of, you just wrap a piece of metal around your neck? Well, no, this is where their scientists come into play, and this is really... <laughs> their marketing de this is department? This really oh, they're impressive. Scientists. Let me, oh, I'm going to hit the back button. Here we go. Alright, let me break this down for you. They use a little thing called aqua titanium. In nature... Titanium is not soluble material, believe it or not. It's not? However, by utilizing the high-intensity filled process, P-H-I-L-D, Phyton scientists are able to dissolve titanium in water. This creates aqua titanium, which can be absorbed into material like a dye. So basically they soak these necklaces in aqua titanium, and that gives you 
your body more ability. That's assuming somehow. that titanium could actually help you out. Right. That yeah. Apparently, titanium has the ability to balance your body. So whenever you go to the doctor and you're looking a little pale, he's like, "You know what you need? You need to take a little bit more titanium, a titanium in, your for you. in your diet." That'll hook you right up, man. I'm telling you. They also have aqua titanium times 30, and this is for the athletes because you get 30 times the concentration. Times 30? OMG. Of aqua titanium. No way. Unbelievable. SDFU. And and it only costs you 90 bucks for a stupid necklace. A giveaway. Yeah, that's fantastic. What a bargain. How did they make any so, money? So, I guess, I've heard somebody ask, I've seen an interview where somebody asked CJ Wilson, you know, do you think the necklace really works? You know, do you feel, do you feel better when you play? And uh, do you, or is it just all in your head? And he actually had a pretty good answer where he said, uh, "Are you talking to me?" Is that what he said? No, no. He said, uh, uh, "He said, well, even if it is all in your head, isn't that the point?" And I guess it is. You know, it's like a if you think if you think you're feeling better, then maybe you're gonna play better. And. Uh, with that, I give them, but it's a fad, is what it is. It's a sports placebo. Yeah, it's a sports placebo. That's what we should call this show. And I'm pointing it out. Okay, <laughs> one other thing I want I want to tell you about fighting that that is pretty hilarious is the fighting is the origin of their name. Now this is really deep, folks. Based on the Greek letter phi and the exponent ten, we crafted a name which symbolizes our goal. Maximizing the perfect balance found in the natural world. What the hell? What does phi and the exponent 10 have to do with maximizing the perfect balance found in the natural world? How does that symbolize that? What? Because they're Japanese. That sounds like something Japanese people would write. That's ridiculous. Yeah, it's feng shui for your name. Both company, companies ridiculous. That's, that's, that's kind of English. they're doing very well. That's so kind that's of annoying. English. It's like, you ever read, like, uh, go to English.com and read some of, like, the product descriptions? It sounds very English. Yep. We crafted a name which symbolizes our goal, maximizing the perfect balance found in the natural world. And that would be like a description for a bag of potato chips or something. Yeah, I just got a text message from uh, Your mom? our viewer, Michael. He was uh, asking, asking if this necklace would be able to help him fly. And the answer is yes, because titanium can pretty much uh, do anything. It has magical abilities. Whenever and, uh, you're trying to defy gravity, you definitely should strap heavy metals around your neck. Yeah, well, aqua titanium, okay? Their scientists perfected this, Richard. Aqua well, titanium. That, basically water. That, and if you're buying it, it probably is water. If you're buying it from So Asian, swimmers should use it. You can probably <laughs> buy it. <laughs> and then at that point, you have no problem. There you flying. go. So, anyway. Ch -ch 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 Chase the dragon. I'm just so annoyed. That's just the noise made that... And then you know all these kids. I'm sure that's. I bet it's huge in like high school and stuff. I bet all the kids are wearing. Well, thank God you guys are reaching out to those kids now and trying to get them ahead of time before they're yeah, caught up no. in the mainstream. Well, I don't know, but Johnny definitely reaches for kids. Listen, well, so if you're gonna buy it, just buy it because it looks cool and say that's why you bought it. Don't don't say it's giving you special abilities because it's not. End of story. Case closed. That's my beef on fighting. So you tell me my Superman underwear really doesn't help me fly. No, fighting helps you fly, not Superman underwear. Oh. Yeah, they're magic. I'll put that around Fighting my... or tying the towel around your neck. Oh, okay. I mean, you have to do that. That's a good Yeah. All right, so uh, what, do you want to get into NHL? And by NHL, I mean stars, because we like them. As we do like see... them. What is that? I actually never heard of the wow. da I've actually never heard of the Dallas Stars before in my life. Um, who are they? Well, they're actually a uh, hockey team based out of Dallas, Texas. And what is this hockey you speak of? Well, I don't. I really don't want to explain that to you because that would take too long. Uh, kind of like explaining sports to girls. Right. Exactly. This takes too long. Yeah. You just pissed off some the couple of female viewers that we have. <laughs> we don't have female viewers. Well, we might have a couple, but <laughs> let's not get into it. <laughs> the. Uh, you're gonna get in trouble. <laughs> no, no, I'm not. No, I'm not. I almost said something. I just held back. You're That's welcome. Good. It's You're probably welcome. best that you did. You're welcome. Um, <laughs> all right. So the stars just did a, an interesting trade out of the blue. They just did it. They traded an amazing winger in James Neal and an below average defenseman and Matt Niskanen for Alex Goligowski from Goligowski, Pittsburgh spell Penguins. It. G O L. No. I G O S K I. No, that's wrong, Richard. No, it's not. Right? 
Look it up, Richard. Polakowski. He doesn't even know how to spell it. Look it up. Wow. Damn. How about that, folks? That's okay. Anyway. Bing will tell me. You win by default. Ooh, Bing. He's using Bing. <laughs> anyway. Bada Bing. So, uh... Bada boom. I guess at first a lot of people were kind of annoyed because we got rid of James Neal, who's our third highest uh, scorer on the team. Yes. He's... Man, overall in the league, he's he's up there. I mean, 22, 22 goals. 22 goals and 30... Well, 39, 39 points. 39 points. 22 goals. Yeah, so he's he's a great winger. And... Uh, and we gave him up along with the defenseman for another defenseman and a lot of, for one defenseman. And I think a lot of people are upset about that. But man, if you look into it and you look at the stats, Goligowski is awesome, and and he's perfect for what this team needs. He's a puck moving defenseman who's going to score for you, and he's also got great defense. You know, he's 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 got 22 assists on the season. Yeah, I was about to say, he's not really going to score as much as he's going to be able to be a an anchor back there at the blue line when you're at the offensive end. But he's also going to with nine goals, so he can score. Well, he can, but, I mean, he's at 22 assists. That's a lot of assists, man. Yep. So he's going to be a guy that's going to be setting it up. He's going to be a guy that obviously knows how to keep that puck in the end, control it, knows how to cycle it around. Yeah, I mean, he's... So that, I mean, and that's what the Stars have had trouble with in the past. We, we don't have we any have, good defense right now, really. Well, Steve Ott. We have well, he's not he's not a defenseman. No, but he does a better job of it than, than most of our guys. Yeah, well, he he's he, Steve Ott's a special player, but one of the things that the Stars have been plagued with was bad defense defense play. That's basically almost what run uh, Turco out of Dallas, is because you know he was having such bad games, and people were some people were blaming it on Turco, and yeah, he was kind of letting soft goals in towards the end of his stay here, but. A lot of it was the blue line, you know. We didn't have Zubov back there, that yeah. that Hall of Famer defenseman, to just have that calm, steady hand whenever you're going, um, whenever you're trying to, you know, move the puck up and knock guys off. He, he was the guy, just kind of like, hey, you know, he's coming this way, and you stay over there, just watch for him to come, stuff like that. The the calming force on our blue line. And that's what people but, are comparing Goligowski to already is he's going to be like a Zubov. I don't know if he'll I don't know you, if he'll be Hall of Fame material, but he's the same kind of player. You need to tell I mean, look, the we can only hope that we made a trade for a Zubov like player, but um we have we have one of the lowest paid D lines uh in the league. You know and we right? didn't and we didn't make any trades in the offseason to improve it at all. Uh well, of course not because Tom Hicks still owns this suck, yeah, this sucker. Yeah, so he's got um. So increasing the uh, increasing our defense at the blue line really does help out. It helps out maybe from a philosophy standpoint because you're trading a D guy like Goligowski for a guy with a Niskanen that maybe somebody some people think that he reached his potential right now. I mean, he didn't reach the potential everybody was hoping he well, would. No, he, no well, yeah, he he reached his potential, but everybody's more. hoping it was a lot higher than what it, what it is right now with only six points, six points, no goals, six assists. So, uh, and a guy that you know people they thought that he was going to come along a lot more than this. And you know, three years ago it was cute that you know he was a rookie and he had a lot of promise, but now it's I, fallen a little bit short. I think he will so, get better, but it maybe wasn't, wasn't going to happen in Dallas. Maybe he will. You know, maybe when he goes to the Penguins and just uh, is a lockdown D D guy, but. Uh, People would say it's not going to happen. I'll tell you, Neil's going to have a fantastic career in Pittsburgh. Man, I am really sad to see. I am too. Neil was great. He was he was a little inconsistent, but overall, man, he was he was a scorer. He's, he's been good. inconsistent this season. Now the first half, he's blowing up. Now a lot of people would argue Richard, that um, a lot of people would argue that Brad Richards was setting his plate a lot more than people give him credit. And for. it looks like he was setting everybody's plate because ever since he's been out, we're not winning. <laughs> Man, I mean, it, last night, how many power play chances did we have? Like, God. Well, last four night. Four in one period. They only scored score. on, that, on that knuckle puck. Oh. That, that, no, that, we didn't score at all. No, they scored on yeah. that knuckle puck random score from uh, that dude's broken stick yeah. and just kind of winged it in. Yeah. I mean, we played a good game last night. It's just that for that, didn't help. And, well, and, and the just, great part, our, the, the guy with the second most amount of time on the ice was Goligowski, who didn't even make it here in time for morning skate. I mean, he was here. Probably four hours before the game started. Yeah, he's got that, that much late. planning with the stars, and he was in there putting out more time than all but one player on the stars. Well, I think you need that. You need you need. It's it's good to have a guy like that. I, a good like a guy like Burrish to and come they still in. Still played that well. Who who hasn't been here? Who just says, you know, I don't care what y'all are going through. 
this is how I want I want to play. And he said, setting that example to possibly play off dividends later on down the road. Even maybe to some of the veterans that maybe are, are kind of pitching it in a little bit. Yeah. But maybe you get a guy in here, a new guy that says, you know, I don't care what's going on. This is how we're going to play. And tonight, uh, was it tonight or tomorrow night? It's tomorrow. tomorrow night we get Burrish back, which I think is going to happen. We should be getting Barch back soon, too. Yeah, we got we got Ben back the other night, and then we get Burst back. And then and Richardson tomorrow. any day now. Richard, Richard, Richardson. Richards, Brad Richards should be coming back any day because he was probable. I mean, they were they were thinking he was going to come back yesterday, and then at the last minute he was still having some concussion like issues. So, yeah. so he should be back any day too. And this team should be really strong. Hopefully, they can put together a good push to get to solidify a playoff spot because they just dropped. They're from, in eleventh place. They're eleventh. Yeah. And it's only because they went on that huge run at the beginning of the season that they had this cushion. Like a lot, that, of, a lot of teams that, that like look at the Devils, man. They 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 blew it at the beginning of the season so much so that they traded Langerbrunner here. But now they're like fifth, man, they're, they they're sixteen out of seventeen, and they're still yeah. not in the playoff picture. Yeah. So and, they're kind of lucky and can't get there unless they do another. They they can't lose but like one or two games. Yeah, they got they got to go on a huge it. run. So yeah, but man. Yeah, we gotta we gotta start getting some wins going because but I think Dolagowski's gonna be great. The once he has some time with his team, gets a few practices in and gets some chemistry going, I think he's gonna make a big difference. I mean, just like last night, like I don't know if you watched, but him and Steve Ott already had a connection. You could see it, man. They were I mean he there was one assist he had to Steve Ott at the blue line on a power play that was just it was Brad Richards esque. And this is a defenseman. I mean, this is going to be great. Well, that's they good. had him running the point on power plays. There's, well, a, gas- well, that, there's a reason he has a lot of those assists, man. Yeah. I mean, he's, he's, he's going to be good. Let's, and let's once he gets his got. chemistry here, he's going to get the time. Because, I mean, in, in Pittsburgh, I mean, this guy, he wasn't getting near the time he's going to get here. He's going to get played a lot here. And he was still putting out those numbers. 22 assists. So with, with more time on the ice, man, and once he gets some chemistry going with this team, we'll get some players back. I think the Stars are going to be a force to be reckoned with, and hopefully they can make the playoffs. I'd love to see some Stars playoffs again. It's been too long. What do you think, Rich? I, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> totally got me not paying attention. <laughs> I know. What are you doing over there, Chad? Autonomous and I were uh, training. He's cybering with some chicken. Uh... <laughs> yeah, yeah. I got the other get chat room open. Head. Get your head in the game. He's like All ASL. Right? I was thinking about that, too. I'm sitting. We were trading uh, back and forth Anchorman quotes. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, oh, wait, sports show. So. Oh, what are you wearing? <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so that's probably good for me. <laughs> oh, oh, you know rich. what? I wanted to touch on something last week. We're not going to talk about this every week, but last week we talked about fringe sports. Okay, dude, you're going to make this like a normal segment, aren't you? Well, even if it is, that's fine. People got involved. I don't want they, fringe but, sports. They suck. God, just shut up and listen to me. There was just one that we, there was one I left out that I like better than curling and has almost no recognition and isn't televised at all. That should be. We don't have to get into it, but ultimate frisbee, great sport. How is that? I'm good at it. How is that different from regular frisbee? Well, regular frisbee is not a sport. With you, you have to be high to play ultimate frisbee. So yeah, you just regular have to frisbee is not a sport. Put like stream in front of something and yeah. makes it cooler. Well, not necessarily the name that makes it cool. It's the actual sport. So do you like throw a frisbee? Yeah. And then like someone comes and punches you in the face? No, not that ultimate. It's uh. You That's know, frisbee you extreme. You basically, you basically <laughs> have watch that. You basically have end zones like in football, and you have two teams, and uh, you can run around all you want, but whenever you have the frisbee, you can't move. You have to you have to stand still, and you have to pass it. And I think you have a certain amount of time to pass it. So it's like lacrosse with frisbees. Yeah, it's pretty awesome, man. It's a, it's a lot of fun. I like it. We don't have to get into it, but I think that's something that doesn't get very much recognition. How come I've and never it's heard to, of it? It's starting to gain. It's starting to gain some popularity. I know in like colleges and stuff, they're starting to get some. How come I've never heard of ultimate frisbee? You're probably not cool. I think that's safe to say. That's probably why. Well, I'm not. You have to one time. We need to get a game together. Me and you. You're just gonna throw We're it to me to our, and then we'll the score. We're talking to our viewers, and then you can get in on it with us. I played ultimate frisbee quite a few times. I know lots of people that would like to play. We can get a game going, and then you can uh, you can give us your take on it. Because it's a lot of fun. I bet I commentate on how gay y'all look. Do y'all still know somebody with a sand volleyball court? No, nobody has an apartment anymore. Is there a sand volleyball court here? Not in my old apartment, there was. Well, that doesn't help us. You should go excavate one, and then just tell anybody who asks that you work for the apartment complex. 
Yeah, Dude, let's just I'm go over play. there and do it. Like yeah. they're gonna ask me, you know, what's your apartment number? And I'm gonna flip in the bird and run off. Just say I'm like, like I've got do. the number here in my pocket, so run! Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah, I would like to play some sandlot. Like in, uh, like in, what's that movie with the uh, oh, Black Sheep? Whenever at the very beginning of the movie, David Spade gets confronted with Nick Nolte, a crazed Nick Nolte that runs on his car. He's like, oh my god, yeah, I got something for you. It's right here. Pull, goes in his glove pull box, box and pulls him off. Ah, he speeds <laughs> off, but he speeds off. He hits like a, he hits a car or something, yeah, so he can't go anywhere. Either. And the, the, Nick Nolte runs over there and like, yeah, weirds him out. That was. No, it wasn't was Nolte, it was Gary. Jeremy's offering up the empty lot next to his house. Gary Whoa, Richard said something. What? What? Oh, Jeremy said he's offering up his uh, empty, the empty lot next to his house. Oh, I was going to bring that up, but I didn't know if Jeremy was on the chat rooms. Yeah, oh, he your has buddy a... Jeremy. See how he got all excited? Dude, he's so gay for you. I, I like Jeremy. He's my friend. Okay? Anyway, listen to this. You're yeah. telling me about going Friends to dinner Friends are gay. With... Yeah, I would like to go to dinner with him. <laughs> That's true. Right, it's just a little antisocial. Don't worry about it. <laughs> and they no, want to know if you're it. drinking a Pabst Blue Ribbon there. No, it's it, it's even worse. It's called Beer 30 well, Listen, Light. we're not going to plug Beer 30 again. We have every week so Pretty much far. every episode, we have a good 15-minute segment on Beer 30. <laughs> it's usually pre-show, though. Well, I don't think it ever gets it's, recorded. It's so bad, I still haven't gotten out of my fridge. It's been in there for, like, since the Super Bowl. Yeah, it's been uncharacteristic of you to have a beer last for, like, more than a week. So. Yeah. I know. That's how bad it is. It usually doesn't last very long. Anyway, Jeremy has an empty lot next to his house that we can build a volleyball court on and play. Like a concrete volleyball court? No. Let's do that. That'd be fun. No, it wouldn't. It wouldn't be fun. Concrete volleyball? (laughs) Yeah, it's the way they play it on the streets. Yeah. Some street volleyballs. How do you think they played volleyball in Roman times? They probably didn't, is the thing. They played it with those little Spartan helmets, too. Yeah. It'd be tight. Yeah, he's... He's funny. He's a funny guy. <laughs> Rich, Don't try to derail me. I'll do, I'll do a good job by doing it on my own. Listen, what do you have to talk about? I talked about fringe sports. Do we want to do our? Uh, do you want to take our hypotheticals from the viewers? That could be fun. If our viewers have hypotheticals, you guys want to answer a trivia question? Yeah. Oh, I'd love to, Let's Rich. To Are you excited for trivia? In the meantime, the viewers can get. Uh, if you have a sports hypothetical question for us, you know. Throw it on the chat rooms and uh, we'll answer it. If not, I got a couple for us to answer anyway. So, all right, trivia. Let's do it. Trivia. All right, tonight's trivia question provided from your co-network people over at the You Can't Brew That on Television podcast. Uh, they're asking so what was the home? Huh? What? what? No, 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 nothing. No talking in the middle of the question. It's the first rule of trivia. What was the first sport in which women were invited to compete at the Olympics? Knitting. This is the easy. This is an easy <laughs> question. And you know, uh, really, like they don't know. Like everybody doesn't know the answer. Yeah, we know that. It's called cooking. Yeah, the first. Yep. That's correct. They cooked, they cooked for the uh, the male athletes. And or cleaning, right? What? No, it was, oh, it was tennis. tennis. Oh, give it a real tennis. answer, too, Richard. Oh, what? I didn't think so. <laughs> a stupid answer first. Come on. Well, that was my actual answer. I, mean, I was going to say tennis. Great. <laughs> no points there. Sorry, you ran out of time. <laughs> Man, we missed it again. We're horrible at trivia. Yeah, I thought you guys knew something about sports and stuff. Listen, I was going to give I you a real answer too. along with it. I don't know what it was yet, but I probably would have gotten around to tennis. I thought it was cooking. Well, it's only an hour and a half long show, so... Hour and a half. Where are we at? We're doing fine. <laughs> well, we've been 40. broadcasting for four straight hours. So. <laughs> oh, yeah. We have to edit the crap out of this. Technical issues. <laughs> Type. Hey, has anybody uh, anybody got any hypotheticals for us on the chat room, Rich? Yeah, Rich, Rich, Rich. Such okay, chat room, come at us. Hypothetical sports scenarios, questions. Throw them, throw them down. Up. Now's, your, so time. Now's your time to shine. We'll answer. We'll go ahead the and internet is listening. If well, anything... Kyle gave us one earlier on uh, our Facebook fan page, uh, the half Sports Sportscast on Facebook. Look it up. Like it so we can get a URL. Um, well, look it up. Yeah. Everybody, we're on, everybody's we're watching on is already on there. Facebook. We're pretty high. We're, yeah, we're, we're big shots. But um, he wants to know if you have a, uh, a really tough NBA player and an average toughness rugby player, who would win in a fight? So Go. The run will obviously win, dude. That's what I'm saying. Average rugby player would beat the crap out of a, out of a tough. NBA no, player. NBA's packing heat. Ooh, that's true. Because no. because of the 
Are you talking about because of their ethnicity, most likely? That is very offensive, Rich. No. Yeah, that's, Dude, if it's cool to wear fighting necklaces, it's cool to carry a piece. Yeah. What about a prison I got my shank? titanium right here. They hold it sideways. Does he, have, does he have a prison shank? Who? That he got from Who? the yard? Yeah, that could happen. Well, what's uh, the dude that... Uh, didn't one of them just get back? No, that's football. That's Plaxico. Plaxico. Dumbass. Um, so yeah, rugby player, right? Average rugby player beat up a uh, tough NBA player. I think that's... Uh, Rich, what do you think? Let's get your input. So, an average rugby player, like some uh, roid raging sure. Scottish guy versus Shaq. Well, I wouldn't really call I Shaq, say Shaq. Shaq. Let's go he's, with like he's just heavy, dude. Yeah, I I he's a brick wall, man. I mean, but usually you're you're. In I, I see a little guy like running at him, just How about giving like it a, his all, like ah! really big, strong oh. dude, Blake Griffin. Blake Griffin versus an average rugby player. Blake Griffin would eat him, dude. I think yeah, that that now that I throw a, a name in there, I'm kind of thinking Blake Griffin might win that battle. That's a yeah. Tough. When you actually think about these larger than life people coming up against any kind of resistance. You know, yeah, you know, and the gun small really cars. Does I still hard. bet NBA. I changed it. I changed it. Really tough NBA player. Are we talking about like a Mac Ten dog? Probably. Word or a Glock. A Glock. A Gat. A Gat. Well, a Gat is a gun in general. A Glock is yeah. a type of gun. Yeah. You have your Mac Ten. They amazing. all kill you in one shot. You know, you're like, right. what's up? Dog? Did your buddy here, Johnny, tell you? Uh, give you another yeah. hypothetical on uh, golf. Who? Autonomous. I already know what it is. A this golf. Guy, this guy. It's a, let's, let's hear him out. Okay. What's the hypothetical, Rich? I don't know. I don't know. He, he assumed you would remember. You oh, okay. terrible, terrible friend. Oh, oh, here it is. I do. I didn't. I, didn't, I thought it. he was going to type it out. I know what it is. Okay. What are you doing? Shut up and listen. Okay. I think it's uh, if, if you're a you're you're a part time golfer right now. Okay. You you somehow manage to get into the Masters and oh, hold on, you, hold on. Am I a part time golfer? Am I living in a house or an apartment? An apartment. You have a girlfriend? Sure. She caught. Yes. She have big boobs. No. Um, what kind of car do I drive? Doesn't matter. It does the stuff. Shut up! Matter. Shut up! Shut up! Listen. Didn't you see Happy Gilmore? Oh my God! Let me finish saying it. <laughs> Jackass. Okay, so you get into the master somehow, and you miraculously win. You play I the best. Be- Shh. You play the <laughs> best. You play the best. Just get shushed. Your- you'll never. I did. What listen, listen. You'll never play that well again, and you won the Masters. Okay. At that point, do you you quit your job because you also you have a full time job right now? Do you quit your job and become a full time golfer, or do you not? I think that was what it was. No, you don't quit. I would. You quit some, because I'd get some endorsement pride. deals. I'd have some. It, you can always get another job. I would quit and I'd concentrate on golf full time. I'd win some tournaments here and there. You know. Oh, I wouldn't oh. win the Masters again. Is that what you're but, saying? No, no. Yeah, you'd become a full time golfer. I think you'd quit golfing. No, no, no. You quit no. your job. Would you quit your job and become a full time golfer? You'd be the most popular spare motherfucker out there. Like Anna Korakova is the most popular 20th ranked female tennis player in the world. Yeah, you get some sweet sponsor or like a commercial deal, even if you're not good, and you'd be making money that way. Yeah, you'd be fine. You'd be set. Yeah. So, so I would quit. Oh, definitely. I think dude. that was the whole question. I, those, I might be leaving something else out. Getting those big but. checks for like a thousand bucks because you suck. Yeah, you'd still get a check, it even in. if you don't win the other ones. So yeah, I'd try it for a while, and if it doesn't work out, then I'd go get a job again. So yeah, I would definitely, I would definitely quit my job. What job would you time. get? Garbage man. I've been like the golf. I would write a book about my experiences. That, you and know that's still not work. You could call it. I don't have anything. Um, <laughs> <laughs> does anybody else? Uh, I think I have another one. I don't remember. Oh, does hi. anybody else have one on there? No. I think I have another one from Paul or Bartonymus, as you would call him. No, we, we gotta keep our anonymity, dude. It's Bartonymus. Yeah. I don't remember what it is. All didn't, right. didn't you say you well, had one for me, Ryan? No, I didn't. Because before the show, you said you had a question for well, me. I'm gonna save it, package dog. You're gonna wait. What? Your package? All right, all right. If you had a sports cast on the internet, what would your what would your Dude, tagline be? My tagline. Are you asking, Richard? This is somebody on the show. Either one. Oh, oh. Are you asking me on a date, Richard? So that's not really a hypothetical. That's just a question. But let's hear what you have to say, Ryan. 
Well, give me an example of a tagline. The example of a tagline, which I conveniently wrote down, which I will look at because I haven't memorized yet. Well, this is where the sidewalk ends, folks. Thanks for joining us here on the Half Ass Sports Cast or the Sports Summer Sausage. Join us next week while Richard will go streaking through the quad to the gymnasium. See you next week. You didn't ask me. Nah, I don't like it.